Hello my soccer viewers and welcome to the review of the Western European uh, leagues. I decided since we had a Classico that this takes precedence over anything that happened in the Premier League or in the Eredivisie. So that's my third video for this one. I also made another tough call. I, of course, you had to have to wear Real Madrid after uh, what happened this week weekend. But then the question was, do I take them off or do I put an away jersey up there? I decided now that I have six La Liga teams. Let's take uh, seven La Liga teams. Uh, let's take it off and show a little bit uh, more different stuff here. Yep, Real Madrid won the Clásico and we will spend a whole lot of time talking about the Clásico. I think we'll spend most of the time talking about what's ha ha happening in Spain because I mostly saw Spain. I very, saw very little of Liga and I only saw results of um, a Liga Nosh. But yeah, with that result and then also the draw of Atleti, we have a really, really tight top of the table and in La Liga and it honestly is at the moment the most exciting title, uh, most exciting league in terms of title. We have a real title race there with uh, at the moment three contenders. Many say on only two, but I don't quite want to count Atleti out yet. Uh, we also have the fact that with all these results that Sevilla is just hanging about, but you never can really uh, count on Sevilla. And I have to say, Sevilla game, yes, yesterday was probably the best of the, of the weekend. And everyone has, uh, has been talking about how great actually the Classico was, that this was one of the best class Classicos in year. So uh, just to give you an idea of what a weekend we had in Spain. And I have to say, La Liga at the moment excites me a lot because of this title race. Uh, France also has a super title race, I have to say. Um, yes, there's a little bit more distance, but I also think we have still roughly four contenders in there. Uh, and it all will, I think it all hinges on the fact how will PSG uh, see out the season. And the question is, will Portugal join it? We had now um, Sporting with a second draw in a row, dropping four points in, uh, losing uh, four points in the advantage over Porto and Benfica, who had big wins. So uh, the big question is really to me, will we see another title race? And this time in Portugal as well. So lots of interesting things happening in West Western Europe. I think of the three of the four types of videos I have, have, have to say the most excitement surely at the moment is in these three leagues. We had the make of, not no, no make of, we had the schedule game between Real Sociedad and Athletic Club uh, from the previous round, which was on Wednesday because of the cup final, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it ended 1-1, one, one, but I, I have not seen anything, but I just just, just seeing that uh, Via Libre gave Athletic Club in the 85th the lead and then Lopez uh, in the 89th uh, equalizes kind of. I think the wind was a little bit out of, it, out, out of that one, but you know. You'll let me know if if I'm wrong uh, there. Uh, it all meant that in the table, Real Sociedad would go ahead of uh, Villarreal um, again and is fifth in the table. And Real Sociedad, we have here this uh, pack of three teams, Real Sociedad, Betis and Villarreal. I think Real Sociedad is probably the best one of these, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will finish out in fifth spot there. Pretty, pretty big result with Uesca beating Elche, which uh, actually sees them out of the relegation zone for the first time, I think, this season, or for at least for the first time in a in, in, in long time, and Eibar losing to Levante going down. But I think we have to start with the Classico. Yeah, the Classico was just uh, such an epic game in uh, many ways. I mean, you have the Classico, you have probably the only Classico potentially played at the Alfredo Di Stefano, so already in the pre-game car, car coverage when they hover over the stadium, you usually see Grant, and then you have a Classico played in uh, like what seemed like a rice bowl or whatever. So it uh, was definitely a weird thing. I still say the camera needs to be put on the other side that you at least have the stand of the Alfredo Di Stefano as a backdrop. So that uh, already the answer. Then I have to say the game itself uh, did not disappoint, although I almost lost interest in it in the f uh, at halftime because Real Madrid so much exploited the few weaknesses of Barcelona that it could have been at halftime clear. Uh, the two 0 scoreline I think was all right. Could have been even more, which probably would not have been. Um, just 
but Real Madrid was really playing right into the, as I said, into the weaknesses and meaning. On the wings, uh, Zidane went with the speed of Felipe Valverde, who can come uh, run, make runs from, from deep, or Vinicius Junior, who you can play a long pass to, and then he will run, run you out. And you know, uh, the wing backs of Barcelona leave you so much space to attack into that Zidane saw this absolutely perfectly. And um, I have. I think we are giving too little credit of how well Zidane is managing, especially those big games. He always sees things. And uh, again, he has a brilliant midfield. He has a brilliant striker up front. And he's kind of constructing his squad around that. And he is actually very flexible. I, I really find Zidane... Uh, I think this may have been his masterpiece, this Classico, I have to say. Uh, the first goal... Uh, nice crawl crossing from uh, um, Lucas into Benzema, who back heels it in. I mean, pick of the bunch. This was a, this this was the greatest goal. Uh, Barcelona, of course. And it, 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 it was also Barcelona tried to stay with the ball and Real Madrid, I don't want to say hit with the counter attack, but definitely hit with, with, with the speed and trying to control the midfield a little bit more. Uh, and whenever Messi had the ball, he got swarmed. Absolutely swarmed, and uh, that played into already the second goal, where uh, he lose he loses the ball. The Vinicius Juniors make make makes a run. He's brought down at the edge of the box. Tony Cross takes the free kick. It takes a bad deflection from um, uh, Dest, and it goes to a to a to a goal. And Jordi Alba just decided to hang back, and the ball comes straight at him. And I guess it must be because in the a replay it really does not look good uh, but I think it with such a speed he just cannot adjust, adjust doesn't have to knock it out but I think what's even worse is he is blocking Ter Stegen right there and then if he was, wasn't there I think Ter Stegen would, 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 would have got, got, got this out so yeah uh, everyone at first you think oh great free creep by Kroos and then I see dang 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 I mean uh, a billiard goal in many ways um, yeah, could have been a third one uh, I think Lucas uh, Vasquez hits the post, not 100% that one. Uh, and you really thought um, almost by the 4th or 4th minute, oh, Barbarson is completely fall for falling apart because Real Madrid is hitting you exactly where it hurts, exactly into the weaknesses. Um, but it also has, has to be said, the rain started to fall and that would become a big factor in making this just an awesome Clásico. Uh, that... Uh, corner, an Olympic corner kick by Messi, uh, hits only the post, so it did not go in, uh, and you know, there were some, some chances. Late on, maybe Barcelona got, found themselves back in, in, into the game, but Real Madrid, the only thing you can blame them in the first half is that they didn't kill the game, and uh, they couldn't do it in the second half, and the second half was then greatly overshadowed by torrential rain, biblically rain, I've heard. I, I mean, this is something... We saw it already in the cup final be, um, between Real Sociedad and Bilbao, there, there, there was a big rain, but such a big rain, I mean, even on the Spanish football poll, what I said, uh, it does not rain in Madrid like that, ever. And it added a lot to the drama. I, uh, I also have to say, I thought through this heavy rain, uh, when there were free kicks, I know that Messi is a great free kick taker, maybe not as of late, but I, I, I really thought, yeah, the ball will be heavy. This will not be easy to get a free, free kick, and, and you know, he never really could do it. And also, I have to say, Barcelona, I mean, Kuman made then the right uh, changes, because Barcelona wrestled control back from around, especially around the 60th minute when they got the goal. Um, through Minguez and I think bringing Griezmann on uh, for, for Dest actually changed uh, the dynamic there also a little bit because now you could uh, hold the ball even, even more and be a little bit safe and the wet ground also prevented you know uh, fast counterattacks in many ways as well as I said torrential rain uh, the jerseys must have gotten very heavy. Messi even changed the jersey. And with the 2 1 scoreline, um, it really seemed that Barcelona could find a way back into it. Um, 
Liverpool though, Real Madrid also had them their, their chances. I mean, the moment for me where, where I thought the Barcelona had had has, has, has a chance when uh, in the 72nd, Bosema, Kroos and Vinicius Jr. came off. And I think with Kroos and Bosema off, I, I, I thought uh, he took off his best players. And he brings on Mariano and Isco and fine, but Marcelo, who I think whenever Marcelo plays, Real Madrid is in trouble. And I think Kuman then also re realizes, yeah, we have to a little bit more uh, give counter, bringing uh, Braithwaite for them, that Dembele, who I did not like in this game at all, and then Trincao to get uh, for Petri uh, a little bit more uh, punch, and then uh, especially with Ilaish come, come coming on in the service, the same. So, uh, it needed a little bit more physicality in, in that game. Marcelo uh, had a big counter-attacking chance. However, it was an all Barcelona late uh, where Casemiro gets sent off for one of the quickest yellow reds uh, for two consecutive fouls uh, in the 89th. And then, yeah, uh, Barcelona had a big chance. They, I think, hit the woodwork. Uh, a, a free kick from Messi. Uh, then there was, of course, the penalty situation where Braithwaite is brought down, but I think it was too little to really give a penalty. Uh, in, in the end, yeah, crossbar is hit, uh, Ter Stegen tries to get the equalizer, they cannot hang on to it, and uh, Real Madrid for a little bit goes top of the table. Messi was changing even his shirt, I think the on, on, only player in the U could see how cold it must have been in that rainfall. Uh, um, players even after that was saying that they cannot really feel themselves, that they're just, they're just shivering. Uh, it was a sight to behold. The last thing I want to say on this classic, I mean, Real Madrid, I think, really deserved to win that one. Uh, the marketing behind Barcelona's jerseys. You have released a jersey that I find, I mean, it's not unpleasant to look at, but it is over-designed in many ways. You release it for one game and now you lose that game. Who is going to buy that one? I think we will find this one in the dustbins very, very soon, unless you drag this out for other ce other celebrations or other games or, or whatever. That jersey is dead in the water. Um, you know, if it comes around for cheap, I might pick it up. <laughs> but uh, I really thought, uh, yeah, great thinking. And maybe this kills off now any specialty jersey for the class. I don't want to see that anymore. In a classical play in your first uh, team jerseys, just keep it a classic look. Maybe last season it could have worked because you had this checkerboard design that no one wanted to see anyway. But yeah, rant over. Let's go to other games. Um, uh, Valencia Real Social was another interesting. Valencia misses a penalty through Carlos Soler on the 29th. And then four or four minutes later, uh, Guevara uh, gets the lead for Real Sociedad that Isa can double right at the stroke of half time. You think Real Sociedad, who didn't seem all that good, they had to convince him, will see this out. But Valencia fights back. Uh, was converts on a penalty. Weird penalty given because the striker of Real Sociedad almost really unmotivated steps I'm not saying on purpose, but he steps on it. Yeah, it's it's penalty. And then Gabriel Bolic the uh, heads in uh, Gedesh cross, and you thought, yeah, Valencia has, has has momentum. They might win it. However, then uh, Gomez, Maxi Gomez, implodes by getting within a minute a yellow card. The first, the first was for an elbow, and he blah, 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 and off he goes. How stupid can it be? And then uh, maybe a Real Sociedad could, could have won it late. Uh, another highly entertaining game that I actually, you know, I was recording the German, the German video, but it was it was really entertaining. It was between Betis and Atletico Madrid, where uh, Atletico Madrid started out well and really combined nicely with uh, over Correa and Carrasco to get the one nil. And at that point, I really thought that Atleti even had the control of the of the game. However, Teo uh, gets an equalizer. And yeah, wonderful jersey matchup. This was beautiful. The green and white against the dark blue and the red. Uh, I loved just visually. This was a great game to watch. And it was also a very entertaining game because uh, especially in the second half, Betis had their real their chances because Atletico Madrid did not know. We don't have Suarez, we don't have Llorente. Shall we really go forward? Shall we, shall we try to go for the win? Whenever they go, Betis is trying to uh, hit, hit, hit you with the counter. It could fall apart at any moment. However, Correa also in stoppage time has two pretty big chances to win it. Atletico Madrid get the point and barely stay on top. We'll look at the table in just a second because first we have to talk about what Celta Vigo against Sevilla did yesterday. 
What a crazy game. Kunde getting the early goal in the seventh minute. Aspas with a penalty, who had already a big chance thereafter. In the 20th and the 20, 23rd, nice counter-attack was uh, Suarez. Turned again, the game came around. Fernando equalized the 35th. Mendes just before the halftime. 3-2 Celta, an absolute nuts game. I, I did not watch it. I said, I'm, t I'm not taking a break. We called call, call, call the Champions League coming up and you know uh, there needs to be then one evening where i don't watch but a little bit little bit um regret it rakitic gets an equalist and the 76 papu gomez wins it for sevilla who stay in there who stay in there if we look now at the uh, standings for la liga the top three within a point and sevilla only six points behind i would love to say sevilla has a chance but i know sevilla does not because sevilla whenever they get close they fall apart so sevilla will stay in the fourth place safely this is their spot fourth best team in spain at, at, at the moment but we see already the chances uh although it's atleti real barcelona the chances still see barcelona slight fav favorite but it is so tight and very exciting Ah, it's two points between, but it's very tight and very exciting. You really feel at this point anyone can win it, although Atletico Madrid is definitely trending downward. They need a few winnable games. They're coming up with a few winnable games. So let's see. I got feeling Real Madrid. However, Real Madrid, they win the big ones. Every big game this season they have won. And I, I actually will tip Real Madrid for the Champions League a whole lot. But um they stumble against small small teams but now on the bottom we also have a pretty big fight uh as i said Wesker for the first time in a long time out of the relegation spot we have Elche, Alaves and Eibar in there Valladolid also hang dangling in there Wesca maybe Getafe could even get dragged in so uh also quite exciting going uh down Expected is that Alaves, Elche and Eibar go down and as I said on the top we have the expected standings that Barcelona, Real Madrid and Atleti will finish within a point of each other so it is so super tight that you don't know where this will end up. So we have that's it on fourth spot and then we have uh, the Europe, Euro, Euro, European spots where unless Atleti Club wins it uh, all three will go into Europe so that's also exciting. Uh, the next round uh, is not a complete round, but it's all played on Sunday, so we have a lot of double dates. Uh, there, I think Betis Valencia is one that uh, looks out, and of course Real Sociedad, oh, I'm looking too far down, Real Sociedad Sevilla, I think is the big game. Getafe Real Madrid, let's see how they will make it, and Atletico Madrid has a very winnable game against Eibar, so uh, maybe Atleti could stay top. Barcelona is not playing. And why that? Yeah, because we have a cup final on Saturday and I think they cleared the schedule for that cup final. I still use the old logo. I know there's a rebranding of the Spanish Football Federation, but we started with that logo. We'll stick with the logo. Same reason why I didn't change the Inter logo uh, in my slides uh, there as well. Moving on to France, where we had a cup round. Yeah, PSG won against Lille. Uh, that was before the international break. We had uh, two big favorites uh, beside PSG, Monaco and Lyon, both needing penalty shootouts. Um, uh, Monaco against Metz, yeah. Uh, you would, would expect them to win it, but uh, it was a whole lot more uh, fight. Red Star with a rather remarkable fight back. Uh, they found themselves 2-0 down against Lyon at the halftime. Uh, Paqueta and Depay scoring the goals, but in the 61st, uh, Ba equalizes and then uh, Royer in the 74th gets, uh, not equalizes, gets the first one, Royer, uh, who already sees the first one, gets the equalizer and it goes all the way to penalties where uh, Red Star misses the first and so um, all uh, Lyon penalties are hit and Lyon moves on but what a showing by Red Star uh, really bravo bravo um, we have uh, you have here here the results we have here the quarterfinals I don't have any dates on it yet so we have to see when they will be played um, we have Roussillon against Montpellier, uh, Rumi Vallier against Toulouse, so we have two really small teams in there then the big one between uh, Lyon and Monaco um, 
at first you want to say PSG is lucky, but you know they had to just play Lille, so maybe Lyon Mona, Monaco uh, makes it nice there as well. And then PSG against Angers. Um, yeah. In Ligue 1 itself, uh, Lille escaping a little bit of a scare against Metz, uh, who miss a penalty in the 17th minute, and then uh, Bura Gilmas and uh, Charlie scored the two goals for Lille to keep them in safely in first place and on track for a title, despite all the financial woes brew brewing in the background. But PSG also not deterred playing, yeah, PSG is playing in a different jersey every time <laughs> they play with their third jer jersey, uh, having not not really travel against Strasbourg, who is not that easy of an opponent, but Mbappé, Sarabi and Ken get three goals just before the halftime. Uh, Sahi pulls one back, but then uh, Paredes in the 79th sets PSG on the way, so a teeny bit of this was the one thing I saw. Uh, I wish I would have seen Montpellier against Marseille, but um, just see the result now. The Breton derby between uh, the big Breton derby between Rennes and Nantes ends with a 1 0 win or, uh, for, the, uh, for Rennes, which Puts not in serious trouble. Also, Lorient, but Lorient also lost a pretty, pretty big. Nim get another point. Maybe Nim uh, could survive. Um, Saint Etienne with a big win over Bordeaux. And we'll see. Bordeaux is also not look, looking pretty. And then uh, the other two big teams, um, Monaco 3 0 over Dijon and also Lyon 3 0 over Angers. Um, which, Angers, uh, which means Lille, not much change up top. It just gets a little bit more tilted towards Lille and PSG in the chances. Uh, but you know, uh, it's very, very tight. I think Lyon will in the end be missing out. Monaco is in a pretty good run and uh, that will be an exciting game to see. On the bottom, as I said, uh, look at where Bordeaux is standing. It's pretty bad looking for them. Still safe-ish enough. Nîmes is at the moment at the relegation spot. Lorient Outside and not hang, 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 hang in there. Uh, expected, we still have Nîmes and Dijon going down on top. Lille, PSG, head to head. On average, 80 points, it's just that Lille has just a smidgen more of a chance to finish in first, first place. And it's then Monaco and Lyon that go more for three and four. Uh, thanks to PSG having a rather good rating uh, in that one. So that's how the mathematics work out. Uh, in the next round, Lille against Montpellier, not an easy game for the league leaders. Uh, definitely, let, let's get our PSG against Saint-Étienne. Um, should be an easy win, you know, I'm always very careful with those. And then Monaco and Lyon have to play uh, bottom dwellers, who uh, Bordeaux seems to be spiraling down a little bit. And uh, Nantes definitely will need the points against Lyon, so uh, rather exciting and that also we can see for the relegation candidates Lorient has a tough task at Marseille um, and Nîmes at home to Strasbourg yeah let's <laughs> let's see Portugal I said it already in the um, at the beginning of the video Sporting dropping points. Porto getting a 2 0 win, Benfica getting a 5 0 win, uh, and Sporting dropping points only uh, getting a 1 1 against Fa Family Cow. Yeah. And uh, so in the standings now, and I didn't see, but it's only six points now. It is still Sporting just before the national break was at 94%. Now we're at 80, 81. It's still points very much towards Sporting. Six point lead is not nothing to sneeze at. But uh, Portugal is also with number of games played relatively behind other leagues. It's only only 26 rounds, so there's a whole lot to play, 34 games, so there's still 8 rounds, rounds to go, so it's by no means safe. Porto could have a say in that one, and as usual, it's not as many movements as we usually see, but there are some movements uh, below 5th spot. Uh, and expected standings, yeah, yeah uh, Porto and Benfica seem to be um, closer containers than Sporting and Porto. However, on the top it seems pretty clear, on the bottom is a lot of fuzziness. And in the next round, uh, Sporting this time can play first. Um, if they get a win against Farange, would put uh, the others into trouble, but they also don't have two uh, tough tasks. Benfica against Gilles Vicente, probably the toughest one, the Nacional against Porto um, is should also be a relatively easy one. So that was it from me for uh, this week in Western Europe. As I said, it's a pretty remarkable week, and especially with this El Clasico Classic and other really good games in Spain. In any case, let, let me know if I missed anything that you would like to add to this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. 
Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day. Thank you.